As an honorary officer, I have just concluded a short visit to New Zealand in search of supplies for China. For eight full years, we have been in this war. We have suffered great hardships, and our whole national economy has been disrupted. We are desperately in need of basic food and uh, materials for an everyday existence. And our allies on battlefronts all over the world now rush to our assistance. New Zealand is to supply us thousands of plows to be drawn by buffalo and many more thousands of shovels for our farmers to bring the land back into cultivation. The job of reconstruction is colossal. And before returning to China, I wish to express the appreciation of my people for what this country is doing to help us. I hope also that later arrangements can be made for teams of New Zealand technical personnel and relief workers to go to China to assist in this most important work. There are wet feet at Wellington when the P&O liner Multan arrives with another boatload of Kiwis. During the trip from Egypt, there's been much speculation as to their arrival date. There's been quite a lot of betting as to whether they'd make it for Christmas. And someone's in the money. Portholes are handy things. You can buy a paper or kiss the girlfriend. Colin Tapley, a New Zealand film actor who served with the Royal Canadian Air Force, is interviewed by reporters as the North Island troops disembark. Captain Upham, VC and Barr greets his wife, who also arrived on the Multan. These men don't seem to be very excited, but they're not home yet. Tomorrow at Waipukara or Oangaiti, it'll be a different story. And there are wet feet in Auckland for the opening of the summer meeting at Ellerslie. But it takes more than the weather to keep 39,000 New Zealand racing enthusiasts at home. Principal attraction for this cheerful Boxing Day crowd is the 5,000 pound Auckland Cup. And they're away to a good start. Sabian takes the lead, followed by Foxwind, Coro, Lanvere, Mr. Rosa, Glen Farrick and Palfrey. Coming into the straight the first time round, Coro's in the lead. As 13th favourite both ways in a field of 13, Coro is the rank outsider in this race. Coming up past the stands, he comfortably holds his position, followed by Sir Bian, Landvere, Foxwind, Glen Farrick, Miss Medley, Palfrey, Chung Chong, Mr Rosa, Expanse and Long Sword. The favourite golden souvenir and our gold are last. Going round the back, the field's well bunched with Coro still leading. And now they're coming into the straight for the finish. Coro still leading with Landvere, Foxwin and Mr. Rosa close behind. Long Sword and Expanse are handy. Now Miss Medley is coming through on the rails and here's Expanse coming in the middle, passing Miss Medley and Long Sword who's on the extreme outside. And here's white-faced Golden Souvenir coming up behind Expanse. He's gaining fast, he's closing up on Long Sword and Miss Medley. Expanse wins with Golden Souvenir second, followed by Miss Medley and Long Sword. Expanse's owner is Mr. W.S. Gooseman, MP, and to him, His Excellency presents the Gold Cup. Next day, with finer weather, sees Epsom course thronged with race cars. For today's highlight is the running of the Auckland Trotting Cup. The tote is busy and race guides are scanned eagerly. They're off. The field gets away to a good start. Highland Scott is in the lead, followed closely by a medical student, who's trailed by Vodo Senwood. Parish lads going nicely on the rails, and Seaborn is on his outside. Many remember Highland Scott's successes of last October, and wonder if he'll bring it off again. Further back are in the mood, Warform, Double Peter, and Warguard.
It's the last lap, and the medical student is on equal terms with Highland Scott. Close up is Virlo Senwood. Seaborn has moved up to fourth place. They're burning up the track. Watch your hat, lady. Still doing well, our black label, Parish Lad, and in the mood. Now, Vodo Senwood challenges medical student and Highland Scott for supremacy. The goings become too hard for Highland Scott, and Vodo Senwood sets the pace. In the mood is coming up fast further out, but with 60 yards to go, Seaborn is coming up from the outside. It's touch and go now, but Seaborn is wearing down Vodo Senwood. It looks like Seaborn's race. Yes, he's first past the post, followed by Vodo Senwood, with double Peter third, beating medical student by a narrow margin. Tired but triumphant, Seaborn leads the way into the birdcage. Jay Bryce drove Seaborn to victory, and Mr. C. Johnston is the fortunate owner who receives the cup. Congratulations and prize of 3,000 pounds.